Now, speaking of climate change and money, have a look at this piece in The Guardian Australia today by its editor, Lenore Taylor. Australia wasted decades in climate denial, it screams, and must break free of the mire of misinformation. The story goes on to repeat a lot of the jaundiced, exaggerated, cherry-picked and misleading climate alarmism and political posturing you'd expect from The Guardian. It says, for instance, the climate crisis becomes more apparent by the day with more summer days of extreme heat, more frequent and severe extreme weather events, bushfire seasons starting earlier, lasting longer and burning different types of forests, the Great Barrier Reef hit by successive years of bleaching and sea levels rising. All of this, of course, ignores so much history, so much recorded facts, so much scientific contention, uh, as we've shown you on this station time and time again. But they always take the most alarmist claims they can and they never seem to question anything put forward or even check it against the historic record. The Guardian goes on to boast about its own evangelism on climate. The climate crisis is the defining issue of our lifetimes and informs all our journalism across business, science, politics, lifestyle and culture. We have considered the language we use and decided to call this an emergency and a crisis because that is what the science tells us it is. So I was reading all this and wondering what was the point of this latest spiel about environmental doom and gloom and the Guardian's role in spreading this fear and loathing. Then, at the end of the piece, this. Your ongoing support is vital for us to deliver the best environmental reporting in Australia. It said, plugging a link for donations. Yep, if you want to keep spreading fear, pushing for the declaration of a climate emergency, ending the drought and setting the global thermostat to a temperature of your choosing, you'd better donate to The Guardian Australia. At least they're up front with their business model. One more thing before we get to the news. I want you to have a look at these pics of Kim Jong-un riding his beautiful white steed in the mountains of his hermit kingdom. The North Korean dictator is obviously looking to boost his image as the strong man of his impoverished and persecuted people. So while it's good for a laugh, of course, it's quite sickening, really, given the kind of regime he's running. Perhaps he's inspired by Vladimir Putin. At least Kim had the wisdom to keep his shirt on. It seems to be a lot of trouble to go to in order to boost your image, especially when there are no rivals allowed in your country anyway, and a new haircut might have been the most obvious option.